Okay, hello and welcome to the Rouse Roach podcast. Hopefully it sounds more professional. We've come all the way to Birmingham and Pirate Studios. Billy, you've made it down to Birmingham. How do you feel to be in the heart of the, well, the country? I had to cross a border, but it was... Uh it was it was entertaining at least. But, yeah. Uh, hopefully it's yeah you can actually hear me a lot clearer. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Uh, I mean, just listening through the headphones, it sounds like we're professional. We know. It, yeah. Compared it's going to gonna sound good. Compared to my phone recordings, yeah. that I have to spend hours sending to you later on. But yeah, it's good. And we haven't had to do our clap to no. synchronize. Nobody's got the clap today. Yeah. <laughs> we might just clap halfway through anyway. Yeah. Just. Uh, um. So. We're going to have a little bit of a chat first of all, Billy, but this episode is going up live on Tuesday, although it's Saturday at the moment. I'm missing the Wolves game for this. I hope everybody appreciates that. Yeah. Um, but we're going to talk about how to fix football first of all. But before we go into that, how are you finding the Midlands, Billy? Uh, wet. So uh, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty like much like home. Obviously, there's a lot more buildings, so it's a lot greyer. It's yeah. not as green as the West Wales. But yeah, we, we play football this morning. Yeah. Um, How would you describe your performance? Uh, abysmal, which <laughs> is uh, an improvement on what I normally... I scored a goal. Yeah. I scored a few goals, actually. Yeah. My uh, performance in goal, I think I s- conceded a fair few. I think we were winning until uh, I went in goal. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the best, was it, really? But yeah. I was getting frustrated that we kept... Whenever we scored, we, we then conceded immediately yeah. after. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's only a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it was good. Good. My, I've done it, uh, did it last year. Did it yeah, this year. So yeah, annual uh, appearance. My annual appearance. Yeah. Um, and then this evening we've got the Copa Libertadores and as a South American football correspondent. Yeah. How, uh, how does it rank amongst other football um, games? Um, it's. It, I would say in um, in South America, it's their equivalent of the Champions League, mm. but on in terms of a global, I don't think it's up there with the Champions League. I think that is, other than the World Cup, is probably the next probably watched final. People uh, were obviously aware of it because of the events of last year's yeah, last final. Year. Was it River Plate and Boca? Yeah, River Plate and Boca. It got. Um, I actually did it as part got my GCSE class to look at it for my health because they have to look at health and safety as part of their thing. So it was quite mm. quite good because when it happened, obviously no one knew what was going to happen following the riots and the violence and then obviously it got moved to the Werner Bauer. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it's not ours. I don't think there's going to be that problem this year no. because we've got, uh, I think it's Flamenco, mm. I think are playing against River Platte. Um, we haven't got internet here. <laughs> uh, check. The, the one we've sacrificed internet yeah. for sound quality um but no yeah um it should be good river plate are in it for the second year in a row wouldn't be surprised if they win it again um but yeah they of course uh birthed the c senior song which has been adopted by wolves and another team from the northwest of this country uh, i think sing it for one of theirs but it yeah. doesn't really make sense because their plays Portuguese or speaks Portuguese, ours speaks Spanish. Yeah, so yeah, so doesn't make any sense. But no, I remember hearing it a lot when uh, I was over there as well. So mm. it was. I didn't see River Plate play. I saw Boca play. So la- I was more invested in last year's. Okay, they were my Argentinian team, and uh, Palmeiras are my br- Brazilian team that I went to see. So nice. Um. So yeah, it should be it should be interesting. I'll yeah. translate for you. Okay. <laughs> when, uh, I'm assuming they'll have English commentary. Uh, but it is on BBC, so uh, yeah. I should hope and so. As well, we spent a lot of time talking about it, but by the time this goes up, it would have already happened It'd and you know happened. that River Plate have yeah. won yeah. or whatever. Um, Anything else happened to you this week? Um, and my friend got in touch all the way from Australia mm. um, after listening to our podcast, Stuart, um, and he... Uh, he was glad to hear that we put in the 2008 Wimbledon final as a uh, as one of the moments, um, as one of the greatest finals, because he was there, and I think he was either the ball boy, but I think he said he carried, I can't remember whose bag off the top of my head, I apologise, Stuart. I'm one of them. This, but he was uh, carrying one of the bags out, uh, so we're not the ball, uh, they don't, they're not the ball boy, I don't know what they're classed as, but he was. Mm. And I know all his, I know his brother's, um, Unfortunately, I can't show you on YouTube, but his I think one of his brothers was one of it was famously hit. <laughs> it's there. So later on, I will find the uh, so Tom and Adrian. There you are. You have, you've had your shout outs as well. Lovely. Um, and well, following on from that, I've just got the analytics up again. Um, yeah. And we've got a new country, Billy. I'll, could you guess? Try and guess the new country. Uh... Montenegro. Very, Billy, very <laughs> close. Serbia. Serbia. Who have you sent it to? Uh, <laughs> to one. So that'll be uh, 
Alexandra, who's from Montenegro, but she's probably having to listen it through some illegal stream. Oh wow! <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to be able to listen to We've it, got somebody listen to a pirate. A pi- Rich, and I would, and that's we, what I would guess purely because I know she goes to Serbia quite a bit, but I know she is currently, I think, living in Montenegro still wow. in Budva. So there you go. She's representing as gl- on another global state. Outstanding. Now, somebody else commented as well saying, can you see where in the UK our listens come from? And you can. Uh, the most popular being Wolverhampton, obviously. Billy, you're not putting your effort in. Come on, uh, nobody from Cardigan. I, I don't understand. We were talking about this on the car on the way in the car on the way up, and I know there's a, at least my mother <laughs> who listens to this podcast, and I'm gonna now uh, have to tell her she needs to sort it out. Yeah, I've just I don't know how I've got onto this, but I've just knocked a button, and it says uh, geographic location. It might surprise you to know, Billy, but a hundred percent of our listeners come from planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the other options? All the other planets. <laughs> 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 oh wow yeah so um, there's still people listening in america and australia now serbia so yeah. fantastic thank you everybody yeah for thank all you all, yeah thank you to our, well you were telling me that we're in triple digits oh yeah on youtube yeah, yeah so uh i don't think i'd ever have expected that yeah. but so yes we are getting out to the masses yeah i'm very very pleased so it's saturday afternoon billy usually i'd be at a football game i'm actually missing the bournemouth game i've already mentioned that but i'm gonna keep on mentioning it just so that people can feel yeah. sorry for me um how do you usually enjoy Football on a Saturday. Uh, so, I, as we are speaking, I am hoping, because the way you haven't got internet, I'm loading up Super 6. Mm. So, I normally would put on Super 6, do my Super 6, and watch Jeff and the team on yeah. Soccer Saturday, and probably do some work, unfortunately. Maybe prepare for the podcast on Tuesday, mm. uh, whilst doing so. Um, if Chelsea are playing at 12, or well, they're playing tonight now, so I'll watch that tonight. Mm-hmm. If you're allowed. If I'm allowed. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I try and, you know, I watch the Premier League predominantly, not to now that my, you know, Burnley are the second team. And then when Wolves were down there, the, you know, I'd keep an eye on their results. There's not many, I think Leeds are the only other team which I keep an eye on, um, purely because the caretaker in the secondary school is a Leeds fan. Right. Okay. And he's very good friends with my father. And they, uh, they always used to give each other some ribs. He used to hide my dad's Chelsea mug. Mm. He's now done doing that to mine. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I keep an eye on them just so I can give him a load of grief. Yeah, well, it's funny you should mention because we were supposed to be joined by a guest who is a Leeds fan, mm-hmm. uh, but we've been let down. Uh, so I sent him a little clip from Alan Partridge <laughs> where Sue Cook lets him down. So big shout out to Liam. Thank you for your contribution. Well done, Liam. Today. Thanks for, yeah, thanks cheers, for coming. Um, but yeah, I... Obviously, go to all the games. Well, I go to as many games as I can. Mm-hmm. I didn't think that I'd get a ticket for this game because we're playing Bournemouth today, which is the smallest ground in the Premier League. Yeah, and we I think we had an allocation of about a thousand last year, so I didn't go to that game last season. Yeah, assumed that I wouldn't get a ticket this season, but I think a lot of people who went last year thought I'm not going there again because it's so far, far away. away yeah. It's November. Wolves are notoriously banned as well from going to seaside destinations <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at, in the summer. Because we played, when we got relegated to what is now League Two, mm-hmm. it was Division Four in the late 80s, we had Scarborough on the first game of the season and we took too many fans and we ended <laughs> up ruining their stadium. <laughs> because, do you know who was the manager of Scarborough at the time? Uh, a very well-known figure who has recently, re- well, I think probably retired. I thought you were going to say return. I was going to say, I don't think it was a Mourinho. No, not Mourinho. Uh, You're on the right lines there. Redknapp? <laughs> no. A bit closer than Mourinho. Um, Lino! You've got to see that. <laughs> Do you not know that clip? <laughs> no. Neil Warnock. Oh, okay, yeah. So he was that. going on, all oh, the Wolves fans are a disgrace. Yeah, the value, yeah, I think that's probably just... Nah, so anyway, that one, every fan. one Wolves fan climbed on top of the roof and fell down through the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a game from the South America. Yeah, so we from since that moment, we've been banned from going to any nice places. So we always get sent to like... <laughs> We had Brighton at the end of October last year. Yeah, Bournemouth today. Anywhere nice we have to go in the summer because of that one. Not in the summer. Sorry, yeah, not in the summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, obviously I go to all the games, home and away. Yeah, and more. Well, for most of my life that's been the case as well. Mm-hmm. Saturday afternoons is always uh, football. Yeah, you know, I've been to Molyneux since I've had a season ticket since I was about eight or nine years old. Yeah, and I can't remember many home games. So that's why. 
in university, it was very, very difficult. Yeah. Particularly when we, because the first year we were in the Premier League. Yeah. The second year we got relegated from the Premier League. Third year, I, I couldn't watch any football at all because of there being no live streams of the Championship, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so I really enjoyed going to the games. You obviously enjoy football in a, in a different way, yeah. which is fine. An armchair. Yeah. Um, but well, no, I try. You know, we're my, my dad and I are we're, uh, members, so we try mm. and go down. You know, I've been lucky. More this year, I didn't come up to watch. Chelsea play at Wolves because I think it was it's sold out. Didn't it? No, no, it was it was, it was sold out. Yeah, it was sold out. Yeah, it was sold out pretty quick. Uh, Burnley, I came up and watch, and then I try and go to the Burnley Chelsea game, depending on when it is. I think it fell on it fell on half term this year, um, but uh, I'd gone away that weekend, so it was it, you know it was difficult. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, most football fans enjoy uh, football from an armchair. Yeah, and uh, well, I do as well for nineteen. 19- 90% of the games that yeah. I watch because that, you know that's what it's for but I feel at the moment Billy I don't know about you but it feels like the the game is going away from the fan that goes to the game oh, yeah, definitely. and it's more more suited and more the changes that are being made are for the fans on the armchair yeah yeah oh definitely definitely um, so that's quick that nicely moves us into today's topic Doc. yes so <laughs> the first thing that I want to discuss which mm. I think is the obvious the elephant in the room it, what's been introduced this year and it's not working there's been you know how many goals I think it was uh, Mike Riley came out this morning and said there have been four goals that have been given that should not have been yeah, given there, or there was four decisions which shouldn't been, have been given I think it was yeah. um, I, I remember reading the article and I can remember I think of those four I think only one which was the uh, Telefeu penalty against Chelsea mm. which didn't impact not didn't impact the game, but didn't affect the results. Result, yeah, Ch- uh, Chelsea still won two one. Whereas I think one of them was Arsenal against Palace. I think it was off the top of my head. Which yeah, that ended a draw, didn't it? Yeah. And that was to make it three nil. Um, and then Palace came back. And I, the other two for the off, the off the top of my head, I can't. Mm. Um, there's probably a Wolves one. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I think because what? there's there's we've been the. That we've had the biggest impact. We are, I think, six points or four, either four or six points short of what we should be on because of results that have be, goals that have been taken off us because of the VAR. VAR. So but, how, we, how we, uh, the majority of the you know other if if okay let's I don't think both of them the other two that we can't think of were wolves. No, but at, so at least one of them might have been the incorrect decision. But they sh- it's for it's done what it should should have done in that sense. Well, there's. There's supposed to be clear and obvious errors. That's the, my yeah, biggest yeah, yeah. issue with it because the offsides that they look at are ridiculous. When I can't think of it, oh, the, the, I think the, oh, best, yeah, the yeah. best example is the Firmi- Firmino goal against Aston Villa that got disallowed. Yeah. Where the the referee, I think it was Martin Atkinson, was the VAR yeah, referee, yeah. drew the line, and then they redrew, redrew drew the, the line, line, and it was in a different place to make him offside. And it just seems as if they're trying their best to see, stop e- goals from, or even the given. the. Um, Liverpool penalty that no the Man City was it the Man City penalty where it hit the hand and it wasn't given. Oh yeah, it's, it's just inconsistent. Yeah, because yeah, all right, you've got a computer. Well, you haven't got a computer looking at it. You've got cameras looking at it, but you've still got a human making the decision at the end yeah. of the day, which you were always going to have. And yeah, yeah. you know, we don't want a robot just saying yes or no. But how would you improve it, Billy? In so, what yeah, ways do you think VAR so, could be improved? Um, you know, we we discussed that we were going to do this. So I wrote a couple of things down that I thought we could do, and one of them was. Um, Miking the ref up, right? Um, so, or even so, then the play, the the not players, but the players would the the stadium here is then what? Yeah. Because uh, I think, um, if I can, if it's there was a ref, I think in the Australian league. That's right. Yeah, he's moved to England, and he's moved. That was his last game. Mm. Um, in so he's gone to he's now in the Championship, I think. Mm. Um, and they ref you know mic'd him up. Um, which you know it went well. Mm. But that was even before VAR. Whereas now VARs come in, you know, you look mm. at rugby and how they've got the technology, and then the ref is explaining, or you know, you know, yeah. like watch the American sports, or like mm. um, even just turning it on and off, like well, in American football, where yeah. it's right. This is the, so they, they only turn the mics on when yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want it all the time. You in don't, football, you don't need no. it all the time, but at least it's there. Um, when I was looking up stuff like that, I can't. Again, because we haven't got internet. It's it, fine. Go with the flow, Billy. There was there was a ref, uh, Millwall against Arsenal. Mm. I can't remember what year. Um, I think it was David 
Ella Ray was the Ellery, yeah, yeah, yeah was the rep. And uh, I think Arsenal didn't know. The Ar- Millwall players knew that he was mic'd up and the Arsenal players didn't. Right. So the all the Arsenal players acted as if he wasn't mic'd up and were just swearing and giving him a load of abuse. <laughs> but obviously he was mic'd up so everyone <laughs> could hear everything they were saying. Whereas yeah. the Millwall players knew and were maybe a bit more reserved. Mm. Um, so, and that was... I don't know what, how long ago, but it was a while ago that was in, that they did that. But I don't know why they haven't sort of because obviously you you know it's different for me being an armchair fan where I they sh- we can see the decisions. Mm. Whereas in the stadiums, it's just they just put it up on the board. Whereas at least with that, you can even if they put it up on the screen or if they're not putting it up on the screen, but they can hear you can hear what the ref playing goes right. This da 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 da. Mm. It's an offside goal, whereas you they don't know what they're, you know, they're, they're checking or stuff. They have said that that's going to improve over the next couple of yeah. weeks. I think there was a big VAR meeting recently, and they mm-hmm. said that it was uh, after our podcast on VAR. Yeah, well, we did say, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah, so I, I, I agree that there needs to, it needs to be explained. You need to hear the conversation between the, um, the VAR referee and the, the referee because yeah. in cricket, I think it works the best. Yeah, cricket and rugby, but cricket is so. Not slow, but yeah. it's, there, it's, there are natural pauses in the game. Yeah, similar to rugby as well, because um, you know there are when there's a try is scored, and there are so many injuries all the yeah. time that they they. And, and, the, and the thing is, they can in rugby they stop the clock. Yeah, um, well, we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that when a goal is given, it needs to be shown on the screen as well. I think they're scared of the reaction of fans in the stadiums. Yeah, but the, re- the it was it's going to get worse. At the moment, I think it was uh, Burnley had a goal disallowed in yeah. their last game before the international break, and you could hear the Burnley fans in the background on Soccer Saturday yeah. singing FVAR, yeah. which is, you know, the the Premier League don't want that, and Sky yeah. don't want that, you know, yeah. on a three o'clock on a Saturday being broadcast. Well, if it was a live, if it was a live game, as in on Tilly, mm. they'd have apologised. They'd have to apologise. Whereas, do you know what I mean? They can't. Yeah. It's a difficult thing. But yeah. no, yeah. Um, that's well, we were watching. Yeah, well, we were watching uh, the cricket last night, mm. and they were looking over that. Uh, dis- there was a decision, an LBW, LBW decision, and yeah. it took them a while to, you know, and they were. It seemed as though they were like, "Yeah, that's fine. We're gonna go. Oh, hang on, we're gonna look at it again." Yeah. I think they looked at it. At they looked at it from, from different the, angles, from the, the onside angle, then they looked at it from the offside angle because they, they look, there appeared to be an edge, but you couldn't tell whether he'd hit his pad or whether he'd hit the ball. Yeah. So then, you know, how long did that take? Yeah, but a even then, or so? that's what I mean. Even even then, it was still a pretty quick decision. They were yeah. like, "Oh, hang on, we're gonna have a look at it." Um, we, we, you know. I don't. You, they show it that on the. Do they show that on yeah, the screen? Yeah, yeah. There'd be a screen in the ground, and they they so hear the, the and they, so they can see him going on and off. Yeah. As in, oh, I'm gonna look at this angle. Rather than be like, oh, why is it taking so yeah. long? You know, because the, the umpire on field was doing his decision, mm. showing the the that it was not out. Mm. But then they kept going. I think he showed it three times. Yeah. Had to check and stuff. But so it's not perfect in every sport. But at least they seem to have a better idea. Yeah. So moving on from that and linking it to cricket. Yeah. Cricket has a review system yeah. where the players are in control of what is happening. Yeah, if, they yeah. do, if they believe that the decision has been incorrectly given, yeah. they can say, let's have another look at that, please. Yeah. They have two reviews per uh, per ball. But by oh, ball, yeah, I, mean I mean each ball has 80 overs in it. Yeah. So once that new ball has perished, yeah. you can have another two reviews. That's in, in just... What form of cricket is that? That's in, in test match cricket. Test so, match, so in yeah, so in one day cricket, you have two reviews in per innings, innings yeah. for both teams. Yeah. Um. What uh, I mean, we're getting sidetracked. But what needs to change about cricket is that they need to have uh, an umpire review as well, where the umpire is not sure, and he can say, mm, "Can I have another I look at that, that, please?" Yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't. I could. So then, see yeah, you could do that in football as well. They could be like, right, the ref can have the. Yeah. Well, the I mean, we've yeah. we've spoken before. I think about how the best example of it was David de Gea against Liverpool, where he'd seen clearly. I think it was Mane. Handballed it and then put it in. Yeah. And De Gea just stood there because he knew this goal's gonna, not going to be allowed. He put yeah. his hand up straight away. Yeah. That for me would work better because the goals that Wolves have had disallowed for it have not were not appealed by the players on the pitch at the time. Right, There's yeah, a yeah. goal that Wolves had disallowed against Southampton where Catrone was millimeters offside and yeah. the pass was to him and then back out to Jimenez to score. No Southampton play put their hand up and appealed. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if they did. Okay, fair enough. Then you can see, yeah, yeah. and but it was very, very slight. And uh, um, the goal that we had disallowed against Leicester in the first game of the season, where it cannons off, yeah. uh, Dendonka heads it into Bolly's arm. Mm. No Leicester player thought it was handball. Yeah. Yet the goal's not given. If the, if it's in the hands of the players, they might think there's 20 minutes of the game left here. It's nil nil. Yeah. We can't afford to concede a goal here. We'll have a look. Yeah. yeah. And then 
that's that's not what it's supposed to be used for. Uh, but th- that's what cricket has become. It's become a part of the tactics of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll think, well, it's when it's used badly, yeah. it affects, affects you. Them, like yeah, it, yeah. Australia in the the Headingley Test match, mm. Ben yeah. Stokes was out. <laughs> <laughs> ben Stokes was out. They reviewed. They'd already used their appeal, their review on a on one that they knew was not out, but they just thought, well, we'll have a look because we're desperate. Mm. But that's part of the tension and the excitement of sport that yeah, people yeah. are interested in. They don't want to see a science and an experiment where it's, you know, one hundred percent correct all, all the time. The time yeah. It's boring. People don't want to see that. No, but it, you know, well, it, it, hope that's I think the next step. You know, after you know, hopefully they implement these changes with VAR and then mm. look at this review system. I think that'll be they've got to get VAR right. First, before they can, imp- you know, maybe when they're abusing it too much, I don't know, is stopping the play and stuff. But yeah. like you said, because um, we, there's also been talk of them introducing where they can stop, they stop the clock every time it goes out of play and reducing the time. I think it took, I think it might have been 40 minutes. Okay. So playing a 40 minute game, 40 minute half game, but they stop the clock. Because like you look at Chelsea's comeback in the Champions League against Ajax. We had there was four minutes added on, but then it took them four minutes to send the two players off and take the penalty. Yeah. Yet on top of that, you've got all the goals being scored and the time that normally gets added for them, the substitutes and stuff like that. Mm. Um, what? Let me have my drink. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that in. We'll yeah. It's natural. Carry on talking. Um, so yeah, so maybe that could be another thing that they want to introduce. But we've spoken a lot about, um, I think, technology and VAR. One thing that I think would help fans go back to stadiums is the ticket prices. Okay. So like if you look at um, like Germany and the cost that they use mm. for the price of them. So I was looking. I'll talk now because um, I bought a Union Berlin or Union Berlin if my dad's listening. He'd be very yeah. cross if I got that wrong. Um, and they, uh, I've looked at how much their tickets are and it, yeah. it's 10 euros per game. Yeah. And I think children are free. Yeah. And they're a Bundesliga team. They, uh, they have been criticised mm. by their fans in a way because they thought... That there is such a small club that they have the opportunity then to sort of get more income by charging twenty euros, and yeah. people would would Happily were willing pay to pay it. Uh, um, I don't think that the ticket prices are too bad because as a fan who goes home and away, the away tickets in the Premier League have been capped at thirty pounds. Yeah, so and uh, UEFA have come up. I don't know if it's the same in the Champions League, but the Europa League there's a cap of forty five euros mm. for any away ticket. So I think they they're going in the right direction. But I think you are right in that the the cost of a Sky subscription is so yeah. high anyway that the, they want to see full... Nobody wants to watch a game with an yeah. empty stadium, but that is happening. Because I, when I was looking, um, in terms of... You look at a season ticket in the Premier League, mm. I think Man City were 10th yeah. on that. Yeah. And then they had teams like Brighton, Bournemouth, above above them. Well, Bournemouth have got to do that because their yeah. ground is so small. small. But that you know, I think Chelsea... Chelsea weren't top. Chelsea, I think, were third behind Arsenal and Tottenham now because they've obviously got their, mm. their new stadiums and stuff. But I was like, you've got to get the fans in. You know, I know City's a big stadium, but then you look at like the t- like, likes of Germany. I think Dortmund have got eighty thousand, yeah, um, aver- average attendance. Whereas I think I think there's the majority majority of the top um, average attendance in the world um, over the last five years is. German clubs, mm. whereas I think there's only I think Man U. There's not many British clubs up there yeah. in terms of their average uh, filling their stadiums. You know, the, the size of our stadiums are probably slightly smaller as well. But mm. just to get more fans back, you know, I, it's it's going to be difficult for me to go and watch Chelsea because of the fewer sheer yeah. distance and stuff. But I know um, that uh, so my girlfriend's mum's partner is a Tottenham season ticket holder, and he travels back and forth yeah. every weekend, so yeah. he'll be. Uh, th- no, I don't think they're home. They're, uh, they're, they're away at West Ham. They're away at West Ham. Oh, we haven't today. mentioned that. Let's just uh, briefly. You're uh, as a Chelsea fan. Yeah, you've gone to Spurs. How do you, what do you make of Mourinho? Uh, I don't. I think it's the sensible decision for Tottenham because I think they need to finish fourth. <laughs> I think the only other manager which probably has a chance of finishing fourth is Wenger. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think he'd have gone there. Um, but no, yeah, I think you look who's out there and who um, who they could have got. Um, relatively cheap, if you want to say cheap. Well, yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's available, the, isn't he? He's available. You know, how was mentioned, but they need fourth. They need to finish fourth because mm. they've just moved to their stadium. You look at like when Arsenal moved to the Emirates, 
you know, Wenger finished, uh, you know, it's even more impressive now since yeah. Wenger's left and, you know, what's happened to United since Fergie's left. Him finishing fourth year after year, mm. you know, should be applauded. Um, Do you think he's relevant though still, Mourinho? Or do you think he's past it? Uh, I don't think he's, I think he's just going to get them to fourth. I think, I don't think. think he's going to bore the pants off. Yeah, I think that's why they, they've got him in, right, we'll get him a couple of seasons because he normally lasts a couple of seasons mm. and then he'll he'll get sacked he'll leave because uh, he's he wants the portugal job has he said that yeah he wants to manage portugal internationally so after the well you never know after the euros he could mm. turn around and go or after the world cup the next you know after the next world cup he could go there which is in two years time we so. haven't even mentioned that billy we haven't spoken have we since wales <laughs> have qualified for the for it's the going crazy in wales yeah like um i think we'll come on to that in our next well it's actually it's gonna be in a couple of weeks time when yeah, it yeah, actually yeah. goes out but we'll mention the euros again yeah um, um but no I, I know um that that was you know impressive everyone they, they should have finished they should have qualified from that group regardless before i'd given up because yeah, uh, that's what I mean. Before, <laughs> before they had such an abysmal start, mm. everyone was like, "Oh, they're not, they're not going to do it." And then they actually did it. Yeah. It was a shot. Whereas they should have, they should have been second in that group. Yeah, when it got drawn, uh, we when they lost to Hungary in uh, June, mm. and well, I watched it with my Hungarian teaching assistant. Yeah, in uh, on a residential mm -hmm. run, and at that point, I thought, "How we, we're not, we're never going to qualify for if we can't qualify for a Euros and expanded Euros with twenty four teams yeah. in it." We're never going to qualify for anything yeah. because we should be. But what's <laughs> what's really frustrating about Wales is that you've got world class players in that team with yeah. Bale, Ramsey. I'd even put Joe Allen in that bracket. I, mean, I think he's amazing. Say, you know, like uh, James now. Oh he's, yeah, well, you know, yeah, he, uh, yeah. He might not be. At I mean, there, I was, I was talking about top teams. Billy Man United are not a yeah, top that's team true, anymore. But no, but you know, but, I mean, but you know, Hennessy's yeah. there. So you got all of them, <laughs> and then crossing the ball to Wigan's centre forward. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem that Wales have. But it's um, it's great. I'm looking forward to the to the summer now. Yeah. I wasn't looking forward to the Euros at all until. Uh, well, this there's week. still a chance because um, um, Scotland have got a chance because I think they play Israel and I can't remember who they could play after that. Yeah, it's interesting how the playoffs are working. I think yeah. is it just one so semi final and then a f like a final. So, so there's um, so it goes back to the nations. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they each play. So the four teams that there's four teams from their band. For, so Scotland's play whoever else was in. I mm. think the C group or whatever yeah. group they're in. I think if if Scotland do qualify for the tournament as well, they will definitely be in England's group, and they yeah, yeah, I think which so. would be exciting. And um, I think the game gets played at Hampden. I think they've already decided. They already know yeah, yeah. because yeah. I think of of how the tournaments work working in this into, time. Yeah, uh, so they know where they're going to be. But the interesting thing is, so Scotland have a chance, but only one of the Irish teams can qualify because right. they're in the same. So oh, they okay. could build. So, so they if they win, the, if they win their semi-finals, they play against each other. So oh, that's a shame. It's well, it's the way that you know. That's yeah. the, the you know. I think they weren't in the, they weren't in the top group. Mm. You know, the England's mm. one. Um, and then I think I think they were in the same one as Wales. So if Wales hadn't of, so it could have been that only right. one of the three then would have qualified. So at least we could get a potential of four out of the five. I see. Well. Four yeah, well, so hopefully, yeah. But anyway, we got a little bit sidetracked there. We were yeah, talking yeah. about attendances. So, as a as a Wolves fan, last season it was very, very difficult to get a ticket for a Wolves game. And season yeah. tickets, with the, for the first time in our or in my lifetime, we've got a waiting list there of about I think it's either but I think it's about five thousand people on this waiting list mm -hmm. for a Wolves season ticket. Yeah, and we've got a capacity ground of thirty thousand. We were selling that out every single week last year. A bit less so this season because I think. You know the prices have gone up for individual games yeah. and stuff like that, so it is something that could be improved. I, as think, well. I think, especially you know, to get the because it is a especially at Chelsea, it's a novelty. People are going, you know, mm. like well, you tourists do are going, which is you, you know, do uh, notice that as well as an away fan. Uh, Liverpool and Man United and yeah. Chelsea are the worst ones. But um, I, l I love, I prefer. So when we do go to the football, I rather go. I'd rather go away because mm. you do get uh, there's a better atmosphere in terms of our the, the club Chelsea's atmosphere whereas mm. going to Stamford Bridge as wonderful as it is it's not I don't get the same feel as when I go you know yeah. coming up to you know coming up to watch the Wolves mm. you know the, um I hope there was the song you sing at the start I owe silver lining yeah I that, Wolverhampton. yeah so that you know that's you know watching that I've al it always makes me smile when I come up and they're singing that oh so it's, it's good, you know. It's good because I'm sick of it. Yeah, you're probably sick of it, but it's because it's something different for me. Okay, you know, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I don't like the you know, 
the thing that I don't like slightly, you could relate it to, is this pre-match entertainment. Mm, well, yeah, that's something as well that uh, that annoys me because, uh, particularly at Wolves, we have such a build-up before the game. Huge, huge yeah. know, fireworks and flames and light shows and whatever. But it was only Wednesday when I went to watch the under-23s play against PSG and they put all that stuff on again because they, it was full of kids. There were 5,000 kids yeah. there. And it was then I looked around at the kids who I'd brought from school and stuff and thought, oh, that's what, yeah, that's, that's why, why, yeah. It's, it's, to, it's for them, it is for but them. But for the regular goer, what happens is the music is so loud in the five minutes prior yeah. to kickoff when everybody's arriving at their seats that the first five, ten minutes of the game, everybody's catching up with each other and there's yeah. no singing until about 15 minutes in if or if something happens in the game. Yeah. Then it builds up. But yeah, that, that's well, something we, that does annoy me as well. The, so when that, the, the game I came up to, obviously we were listening to the cricket as well. Oh, and yeah, that was, yeah. So we had that, we were trying to listen, uh, well, not just us, there was uh, several people trying to listen to that. Whilst uh, all by the cricket, you mean the Headingley Test match as well, just for everybody. Yeah. Listening. Um. So the, it was... We were trying to listen to what was going on with all this mm. music blaring, and we were like, we, we couldn't obviously tell them to be quiet and stop. <laughs> but everyone was trying to listen to this one. You'd have thought they could have put it on, yeah, that well, you yeah. know. But um, but yeah, um, so yeah, one other thing which I'm sure a lot of people probably want to get rid of, or they can't get rid of them, are agents. Okay, just well, the the fees, the fees, the, you know, the agent fee or cap the agent fee or whatever they, you know, whatever involvement they can. Because there's, you know, when Pogba moved and stuff like that, the amount of money that's just getting thrown at yeah. these, these, which some of them are... I mean, they're very useful for us. I, I was going to say, for, <laughs> for Wolves, you probably need to keep them. Um, <laughs> and it's, which is funny, because now Chelsea are just going to use their academy players for this season. Yeah. I think five years ago, we would have never thought mm. that our clubs had switched roles in that <laughs> sense. Um, <laughs> but just, it's it's just ridiculous, some of them. And some of it, it's a case of some just... Don't do anything, and they just sign. You know, mm. they manage to sign on because even I think probably them signing on an a, an extension, they get paid this stupid amount of money. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think p- potentially looking at agents and what their role is in in sports could mm. could be looked at. I um, there's a few of them. Um, Leander Den Donker is an example with Wolves, who's I think his brother is a he's an agent because mm-hmm. he's just a pig farmer. Do you yeah, know yeah, about yeah, Den Donker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so some of them are. Like they keep the jobs for the boys, but they they're not really going to ever be. They're not, he's not going to earn two hundred, three hundred oh, no, yeah, pounds a week. There's so, but there's certain ones where you look at like um, who's the one for the wolves? George Mendes. Mendes, yeah. It's just he, he's just rolling in it. Ab- which fair play to the bloke. He's managed to get a job. Yeah. Do you know who his first client was? Oh <laughs> no, I can't. I, it, it eludes me at this moment. No, no. It was Nuno. Yeah. I thought it was Nuno. Yeah. But yeah. No, um he you know, f- you know fair play to the book. He's managed to make a living out of Mate, if I if I could do it. Oh yeah. I would. <laughs> yeah. If I knew footballers and said, Oh mate, I'll get you a job in uh, playing for Wolves. But that's yeah. the thing. Um and there's quite a few ex footballers who are now becoming agents. Yeah, yeah. One it's... example I, c- I know of is Stephen Hunt, who's played for that, Wolves. That, so that makes more it, it does make us whereas some random bloke off the street who got, yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? But um my cousin wants to be one as well, so uh, you know, I'm just going to keep friends with him just in case, just in uh, case. he needs a, a, you know somebody to a secretary. Ring of, yeah, I'll yeah, admin, I can do that. Yeah. Cool. Have you got anything else, Tom? That you? Uh, uh, well, you mentioned it earlier on uh, about stoppage time. Yeah. Because it really frustrates me because of how, as you mentioned, how inconsistent it was. Yeah, yeah. But also, there's no need for it because, like, in rugby, it works really well. However, you do end up with games that last for two hours now rather than eighty minutes. Yeah, yeah. But there's nothing like when I've played the other day Wolves were playing against Slovan Bratislava a player gets kicked in the head and goes down for 10 minutes so we have yeah. 12 minutes added time so the the game stops for 10 minutes the players are all jogging around and stuff why not just stop the clock there yeah, yeah. at 70 minutes and then restart it again there's no I don't I really yeah, well, don't understand how that and I then, and then you would avo- you would avoid time wasting because there's no point in it because so the, the referee when I would actually the, stop the clock when I looked it up and stuff I think that the main reason that they don't do it is because of the TV. Mm. Because if so, say for example now, like you know, we've said Tottenham and West Ham are playing. Mm. If they play, if they kick off, um, and it carries on and keeps going, it, it gets it. It and impacts the three o'clock. It impacts the three o'clock, and they can't. Is it still a law that they can't play? It is. Shows. Well, that's I, that was another thing that I was going to mention. Is yeah. but we'll get to that in a minute. So that I think it, and that's the reason. And then obviously the three o'clock games then could impact, etc., etc., etc. And it's a case of I think they want 
And then you look at um, things like uh, like the end of the season, mm. where games could finish after. And, uh, and oh, okay. sort of, I think. Well, I mean, th- there's ways of getting around that. You just make sure that. But they, uh, you look at the rugby, the rugby like Six Nations, mm. just because th- that's uh, off the top of my head. Uh, they finish all the Six Nations on the same day, and they kick off. Uh, uh, no, they don't kick off at the same time. Do no, they? and no. that's what's annoying is that sometimes you get a. Somebody and winning the Six Nations in an empty stadium and they lift yeah. that trophy up, yeah, which so is a bit depressing. But it could be... You know, there's, <coughs> there's ways of looking around it, but I think the main reason is because of the TV. Yeah. But go on, you were saying about three o'clock. So, yeah, three o'clock kickoffs need to... Because the whole point of not having games on telly at three o'clock on a Saturday is that it would impact the attendances. So instead of doing that, they then put Newcastle away to Southampton on a Monday night. So that that is going to impact the yeah, yeah. away attendance, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody's going to do that travelling. And it's it really anno- annoys me. as Because as well, in Australia and in America, mm. and there must be other countries as well, have every single three o'clock kickoff on their, you know, on Fox yeah, or yeah. whatever it is, whatever network. Yeah, America definitely do. America, America definitely do. Yeah, we live in the country where these sports are happening and we can't see it. Yeah. I mean, we can and everybody does. That's but yeah, yeah. There's a way, there are... Yeah. ways around but this but it's actually we, obviously neither of us do that Tom I mean no but I will say <laughs> about a very close friend of mine called um, me <laughs> he uh, watched Ben me <laughs> he watched the uh, Arsenal Wolves game the other week uh, in at the Emirates with Chinese commentary and we found it hilarious my grandparents my 80 year old grandparents were watching yeah. it and they found it very funny when they're going like Den Donka Jimenez yeah. <laughs> it was really funny but you know, we should be able to just tune in and watch it. But oh, I yeah. think Sky have made... I do like Soccer Saturday, mm-hmm. but I would much rather actually see the games. See the games, yeah. Or, you know, like they do on a midweek game with the championship, mm-hmm. where as soon as a goal goes in, they can show it, show it straight, straight away. away. Well, they do that, I think, now on Saturday anyway. With the with the lower leagues, I think they still manage to show... Do I, I'm, don't quote me on it, but I, I know... Just, yeah. I don't think you're right. <laughs> I'm sure it might be midweek then. It might be just midweek. Midweek, definitely. It. Yeah, yeah, it might be just that then. And as well, midweek with Sky, they show every single uh, game on the red button yeah, on yeah. Sky. Is Every single game is available to watch in the championship. I'm not sure about League One and Two, but mm. we've done that before. We, when Albion were in the, you know, Albion are losing to somebody, you definitely want to watch it, <laughs> don't you? So, yeah. Um, I think that's everything I've got. To yeah, change the about on, football. The only I know we're, we're obviously we're keeping an eye on the clock, but the mm. other one thing I wanted to ask you about was what about in Christmas or winter break? Well, I think because we're going to have one. We, uh, it's definitely uh, going to be one in twenty twenty two. Yeah, I was going to say we're going to have one in the World Cup when the World Cup is it. Um, so yeah, I think they have. Have they floated the idea? Or is it happening at some point? Uh, what now? And a, a winter break. So, well, the World next Cup season or something. I, d- I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's just a case of whether mm. you think you know. I know a lot of like Klopp and the European managers who've come from countries yeah. which are, are, used are to. trying to push for it. Mm. But whether we, I don't know how we'll squeeze one in because there's just games. Galore. I don't think it can be around Christmas time because I think that the games are so ingrained in the culture that. No, yeah, Boxing but you could Day. do it. You could turn around and go right instead of Christmas. Right, you go for the first two weeks of January. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do it in the Premier League either. I would do it in League One and League Two because there are so many games postponed that in March and April mm. they are playing two or three games a week anyway, to yeah. catch up. Um, but I don't, think the, I don't think the Premier League needs it because I mean I don't know the the, the, the statistics off the top of my head about injuries and stuff. No, yeah, but well, it was just they're not playing too. I mean the Wolves have got to play Man City and Liverpool within forty eight hours mm. or over Christmas, which is. Tough going. Yeah, we will probably end up winning both those games. Well, you <laughs> look at like Liverpool now; they've got to play two games in. It, well, that is ridiculous. But they're yeah. different competitions, and I can't believe. I mean, I, uh, they haven't said what they're going to do if they Liverpool. That, but I imagine they're going to field two teams. They're going to play an under eighteen team or something. Well, they've probably got a good enough squad to play two half decent teams and and win both games. Because it's a league, it's a league cup game. I think. Yeah, it's, against it's Villa, close. which is really annoying as well because we we played a really weak team against Villa in the previous round, yeah. so therefore would have got through and. At home, in hind- hindsight, is a is a wonderful thing. Yeah, but uh, well, <laughs> but no, it was just a thing because it, it is one thing other than VAR, which is obviously taking the headlines at the minute, which has before VAR alongside VAR has predominantly been one of the changes mm. which people have been. You know, there's ov- obviously you've got like um, transfers and all that stuff. You know, changing. And yeah, well, not for not for me. I would take away the January transfer window. 
and, what, and just maybe the summer transfer window and, and like it used to be just does have a free for all free for all <laughs> because then you wouldn't have the drama of the last day and Jim White but sitting then in his it's stupid again tie. for the TV well exactly and that's that's the main problem with football yeah, is but, television yeah but and it would stop you know like in January prices do seem to inflate and well yeah so Wolves at the moment need a new defense because Willie Bolly's broken his leg Jesus Vallejo is the worst footballer I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Uh, Ryan Bennett's been injured a lot, so yeah. we need we need to buy defenders. But if you're only going to buy a good defender in the summer, because no good no team is going to let a defender go who's yeah. any good in the in January, and if they do, it's when yeah. you get fifty. You never know. You could get Torres. Rudiger on loan. He's got to come back from his. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it's going to happen. No, I don't think he'll come. But yeah, I mean, you yeah. never know. So but I think the conclusion is. That what is mainly wrong with football is television and Sky Sports. Yeah, would you agree? Yeah, um, well, maybe not. You know, not just Sky Sports. I think all television in general. You know, BT, and you're not just slagging one. Yeah. TV for Brighton. I mean, off. I'm not. I don't think I'm <laughs> going to get a job with Sky, so it doesn't. Uh, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I've forgotten to plug our social media platforms, Billy. Oh, you can do it now at the. At, uh, and we'll do. Just, we're we're just, at the end now. So. Well, just before we get on to the quizzes. Oh, oh <laughs> which will be swiftly edited on. They might not sound as good as this. Yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, so you can follow us at Rouse Roach Pod on Twitter. We've now got eight followers, Billy. Well, hey, is that <laughs> including me and you? Uh, let me just check. Probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh no, there's a couple of other people. Yeah. Oh. But I know all of them. Oh no, apart from one, I don't know him. Okay. It, might, it might be my friend then. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Ing- Ingram, shout out to you, mate. You're the only person who really follows this uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, follow the. You can find us on YouTube as well. That's the main place where people listen on YouTube. So yeah, which is on where? On YouTube. The, oh, sorry, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the old golden black on YouTube uh, and Instagram at Rouse Roach Pod. Or email us your funny stories. We I want to hear some. Just general sporting stories from all of our listeners at uh, rouseroach.pod at gmail.com. But anyway, we'll we'll leave it there for this week, Billy. Uh, I'll see you very soon for the next episode. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, Tom. Bye-bye. Okay, right, recording. So that was the main show, and now we're back at headquarters in my house, so therefore the quality of the audio (laughs) might not be quite as good, but we're... uh, we're doing a quiz now, uh, so to decide who's going to go first bidding, I'm going to cost a toin. Uh, heads or tails? Heads. Heads. For heads. <laughs> uh, oh, because it's a euro, um, there aren't... What? <laughs> right. it's, a, it's a 10 cents euro, so there we'll, we'll say that that side there, which I can't tell what it, what's that on it. Um, Something to do with Spain. Yeah, let's just say the one with the map of the, the of Europe is heads. Okay, map of Europe or other side. <laughs> yeah, Europe. Oh, Billy, pro Europe, uh, and it's come up pro Europe. There we go. Uh, so remain. So I. So, <laughs> so I, you can ask. Oh, you can choose. Do you want to ask the question first? Uh, I'll I'll, I'll ask the question first. Okay. Um. So similar. So this is. I didn't mean to uh, include this question because this is one that I had made last week. Mm-hmm. But it's quite. It's quite topical for our podcast, as you obviously brought in the fact that we have. Uh, well, like Alexandra is listening from Montenegro, oh, yeah. and Montenegro's in this question. No way. Um, England played their one thousandth friendly mm-hmm. against Montenegro on Thursday. One thousandth match, not one thousandth friendly. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that's that's this is what's the word of the question that's come up. Okay. Um, how many of those games have they won? So there's there's actually uh, three options. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to be as mean as to get you as close as possible. So uh, 569, yeah. 670, or 850. Well, I wasn't expecting it to be over 300 or 350 because. You always, t- I always like work out what my win percentage is of the Wolves and stuff, and it's mm-hmm. always you see a third of uh, wins, yeah, and a third defeats, and a third draws. So I'll go for the the, but England often play against terrible teams, don't they, John? Uh, I'll go for the middle one. 
Six seventy. Six seventy. Uh, you were actually correct the first time. It was oh. five six nine. So you should have Christ. stayed with your gut instinct there, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> As always, you seem to talk oh. yourself out of, the, out of these things. God. Gordon Dennis. Right. Uh, we've mentioned the Olympics quite a few times, Billy. Could you tell me, Billy, what colours make up the Olympic rings? Ooh, uh, red, correct. Green, yes. Black, yes. Blue. And yes. yellow? Yes. Well done. Yes. One nil to Billy. Oh. Again. <laughs> right. Um, England and New Zealand went to another super over quite recently. Oh, yes. To decide their uh, IT20, is it? Series yeah. last, yeah, a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Oh, no. uh, which English batsman scored the most runs in that match? Oh. Um, Owen Morgan? Uh, incorrect. It's Johnny Bar Bairstow. Bairstow. Um Never mind. Eh? Never, oh, yeah. never mind. <laughs> hey ho. Uh, so that's two. Uh, well, two <laughs> two questions wrong. Yeah. One nil to me. So hopefully I can okay. steal the victory here. This one might be very easy. I don't know because it's about American sport. Oh. Um, what sport is played by the Minnesota Twins? Oh. Uh, I want to say ice hockey. Incorrect at last. <laughs> Baseball. Base. Uh, I was going to say because they're two sports which I don't really follow. It was, yeah. it was either <laughs> hockey or baseball, so I, I thought I'd plan for that ice yeah. hockey. Oh, so you're still a chance. You're still in with a chance here, Tom. Here's your final question of this quiz. Where did Jose Mourinho begin his managerial career? Oh, God. As a, as a manager yeah, now. Porto was in his first job and he also, he didn't manage Barcelona. No, 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 no. He was, uh, but did he manage Barcelona B or something like that? Um, <laughs> great silence here. Exactly. It, must be, oh, it must be somewhere in Spain or Portugal. I don't know. I'll go for the same as Nuno. Rio Ave. Incorrect. It was actually Benfica. So oh. I've gone from one major Portuguese to oh, another. Well. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there was a spell in between going mm, from Benfica else. to Porto but yeah I, I've t forgotten about that but uh, yes so here we are uh, for me to so win what's it what's the score? Uh, I'm winning no it's a draw but I can win it here so if okay. this will be a tie if uh, if not again okay, we'll just really, share use, the points I'll use this one because I don't think you'll get this one <laughs> <laughs> it's tactical uh, which sport is played on the largest pitch? Uh, for some reason I'm thinking I'm probably miles off, but uh, I'm going for Australian football. No, I mean, I don't know. That is on quite a big pitch. Yeah. But I don't think as big as a cricket pitch. Oh, okay. Cricket pitch is also not the right answer. All oh, right. The answer is polo. Polo? No, I wouldn't have. No. No, That's why I chose it, because I thought... Yeah, I, never, I would have never chance. got that. American football was the one I was thinking at next, but I think they're pretty similar. American mm. football is tiny. Yeah. Only because yeah. When, uh, when Spurs... The oh yeah, they have to shrink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to change there, yeah. of course. And, and rugby and football, I know, are quite similar sizes. Mm. Um, but no, I would never have never yeah. have got that. Right. So that's points shared. Hooray! <laughs> I'm off the mark. Yeah. Right. Tell us what we're doing next week, then, Billy. Oh, got next the, week I've got the yeah. got the number generator. Have you got the? the I've got the list as well. As well yes. Okay. So um, so Some we nice we've got change. currently we had 14 topics to start. Well, 15 if we include. This week's because this week wasn't one of the topics that yeah. we've done this week about how to fix football. Yeah. Um, so we started with 14 and we've lost four of them, so we're down to 10. But Ooh, so I've clicked the number generator. Number four, Thomas. Like we've had number that. four, so I'll really need to click the did, button I, again. I predicted that, didn't I? Really? Yeah, you have You're off, off uh, not off camera, but off, off, off audio, <laughs> <laughs> off mic. Uh, number six. Oh. Uh, Greatest comebacks of all time. Oh yes, please. Um, are we are we allow are we having all sports now? Because you had you had restricted me. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's purely because I think we've spoken. I know we've spoken quite recently. I think, or we because we've recorded the decade. Mm. We're going to be speaking about a couple. I think of comebacks within that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe oh, broaden it out. May uh, and try to not mention one that we've mentioned before. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Yeah, no. Okay. Right. We'll leave it there. Um, I can't remember whether I mentioned on the previous recording where to find us on. I think you did because it was at the end and okay. you were cursing me for not reminding you to do it at the start. <laughs> okay, so great. I'm reminding you now for the next one to do it at the start. <laughs> okay, right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye, Bye. <laughs>